good. Hope you are. Oh, I'm doing all right. Mansfield and Erickson came down and dumped the CIA stuff in my lap. Damn I school. didn't see so what you had to do with it, but they said they were going to. It was the damnest fool thing I ever saw. I told them that I didn't ever want to order anybody to tell any secrets to anyone that they didn't trust. Well, the rules of the Senate take care of the situation, and the fact of the matter, why, you, you, uh, it's not in your domain. I want, I want to talk to you about it before I give an answer. I told them that I wasn't supposed to give any such instructions. I want to think it over. Uh, Dirksen said he didn't think I ought to. Mansfield, I just, uh, I asked him, I said, what did you do if you and I said, well, is it I? That's a very difficult matter. He wouldn't take a position. Oh, well, he'd take a strong position. He, he told me he was strongly in favor of uh, doing it this way and all. <coughs> and I I said, well, he, he brought this up. I said, well, of course, you've got something out. I don't uh, have any control over it. If everybody wants to appoint a subcommittee, he can appoint it. And the president wants to order the CIA to spill his guts to anybody in the world. Well, you've got a right to do that. And, so it's out of my hands. I got no control of it. Uh, what do you think about uh, I'm giving it to this Clark Clifford committee? They've been doing it. Uh, would you, uh, Clifford's going to come in the administration, I think. I could just abolish that committee and just tell them I don't think it. I think the trouble is that too many got supervision now. Just leave it up to the ones that uh, got it under the rules of the Congress. Well, we got the votes finally. I've had to operate a lot around, but I've got enough to beat the ass off of them. There's a, just that little disarmament crowd. There's a Nelson, McGovern, Fulbright, Morris. Oh, they got 25 votes, I think, maybe. Maybe, maybe 35. But I got plenty to beat them. I think you're on high ground when you just say that's an internal matter in the Senate. And you just don't feel a, a liberty to uh, invade the procedures in the Senate. You, of course, uh, press legislation there under the Senate procedures, but you don't uh, <coughs> feel that you should uh, undertake the directive to invade the uh, executive and the legislative, and the legislators don't want to invade the executive. Dexon scared Mansfield off. Mansfield was red hot on it until he talked to Dexon. What's happening in Georgia? It's the damnedest mess down there I have ever seen. It, it is the worst mess that government business that I have ever seen in my life. three days later and said he wasn't going to run and couldn't run. So it, it is truly left him in a, in a mess. And I wish, I mean, if I were a young man about 35 years old down there in the state legislature, I could just clean that old crowd out one end or the other. They got a lot of them running, but none of them are very strong. Hmm. None of them have any great popular appeal. We got a pretty disastrous poll coming up on Vietnam. About 35, 6% want to get out. About 48% approve what we're doing and the way I'm handling it. About 41% approve what I'm doing and about 36% are disapproved. Well, you're going to have to do something different out there. If you don't, you're going to eventually get in trouble. Back in my gave you some good advice on that. What's that? About pushing a little bit harder. Well, he's not advising that now. We've got until we get a government, until we get them propped up. Nobody really well, I is. I think the government's trading stuff out pretty well out there. Well, not yet. Not yet. It's, it's on its way to doing it, but it's, it's not. Uh, well, I don't think it ever will. Be clamped down and be a real government anymore than I think you're going to have one in San Domingo. You may have one, but... Yeah, well, we 
We did a pretty good job there. Did a hell of a good job. I'm sure it cost us a lot of money, but we did a good job. Well, it, it cost as much as it cost us to been another Cuba. You know, it's not costing us as much as the best investment we've made. These goddamn Washington Post, New York Times, won't ever say so, just like they don't Panama or Brazil or Chile or any other place that we've saved from the shit they got it in. But uh, uh, what happened there? know more about our military system than I do. They know more about everything that happens than we do. And they know that we've got a very strong system. Uh, it's weakening greatly the way they're running it. It's going to be <coughs> sort of a hodgepodge. Don't you believe that this system is stronger than it was when we came into office? A hell of a lot. Yes, but... Uh, yeah, what do you mean it's being weakened? It's losing ground now. Well, of course it's, it's losing, losing, it's losing ground awfully because of your uh, rich position on the reserves, Mr. President. Uh, yeah, these reserves, uh, you're picking, pulling all the people out of Europe and sending them over there and filling them up with the well, they ain't got a shirt tail pull out of Europe, not a shirt tail. Well, just 17 dollars. 15, I don't amount to them, then. Well, so we exchanged them, we moved them around, back in and out. I know, but you put a lot of draftees in there. But uh, why in the world you don't put some of those people from Europe in these reserve divisions and take these reservists out and let them go to fight uh, is something I can't understand because there's nothing... Well, you may get a request up there some morning. There's nothing, in, there's nothing in combat like having a man that knows what he's doing somewhere along with a squad of seven, eight, three men. Our boys know what they're doing. Well, they're doing damn well. These reserves that don't know. Because by golly, uh, and, and, and McNamara just sits up there and testifies like he thinks he's six reserve uh, division and 12 reserve brigades are just equal to anything in the United States or in the world or anywhere else, and I know damn well they aren't, because I've been out with them. The first place, if we, first place if we tried to call them up, by God, we'd have to kiss I you all around and hug I'm you for weeks. I'm in favor of calling them all up. I'm in favor of calling them up selectively. And we wouldn't anymore and get them up until, by God, they'd have to go back. And we just, uh, all we do is satisfy old Jake Carlton, and that'd be the only one we'd do, and everybody well, else would be getting Jake Carlton, I didn't even know his position. Oh, well, I, you know, by God, he has finished, been hammering us over the head about that. Well, I know, but they haven't about to, they, they've been doing it about keeping the reserves compartmentalized like they are now. They I tell me that they only got... With the director of the establishment. You've got one old man over there, Johnson, that thought he couldn't get along without him for a while until they showed him what he had and waked him up. Now, he, I think he's had to satisfied. He doesn't think it. And if we called him up, we'd, you'd have to give us legislation, would you? Well, I, we can get the legislation if yeah. we don't have to yeah. because you can just proclaim a limited to money. Yeah, sure. I could. Uh, yeah, and I could get us in the middle of a big war, and I go to messing around here, too. I don't know what kind of agreements these folks got with the Russian. I'm going to be awful careful, but... Well, I, I, agree with you. I agree with you on that, as far as making it a declaration of war, but... That's right. Any, anything short of that, I don't think it's dangerous. No, I... I'm, I'm we may have to call them up, but when I do, I'm going to make you all run like turkeys. You're going to say, well, can't do it for over back 12 months and 14 months. And yeah, I'll just I'm have one goddamn constant in Berlin, because I knew that was all a fraud. It wasn't in need of calling them up, and I put that 12 months in there. But it's going to be 24 months now, just like the draft team, as far as if I have anything to do with it. Well, you can write your ticket on it. Now, you better give us plenty of time, because I may... You know about the fellow, don't you, that made the speech on sex? And well, I, I, oh, that's 
that's all I can do now is make a speech on it. I well, remember that far back, but it, it, you did, it, did you ever did I ever tell did I ever did I ever tell you that story? No. Well, a fella came home one night and he's late and his wife laying up waiting for him about midnight and said, "Where in the hell have you been?" And he's about half drunk, and he apologized and said, well, honey, I stopped off at the club and said they all got to drink, and they asked me to make them a speech, and I made them a speech. She said, what did you talk about? He said, aviation. said, we're talking about putting an aviation service in the company, and I talked to her about aviation. She turned over and went on to sleep. Next day, she's down to the grocery store, and a woman came and said, oh, God said, your husband must have made a wonderful speech last night. I said, my husband came home midnight, wake me up, turned me over, and said, oh, we had a wonderful evening. <laughs> The other one, she got down to the checker and started to check out her grocery. She said, oh, your husband said that he must have made a wonderful speech last night. I said, my husband says the most inspiring speech here. And the third one, she got in the car and told him the same thing. She said, well, I don't know why it was such a damn good speech that he knows very little about the subject. <laughs> said, the only experience, said, the only experience he's ever had in his whole damn life, he just had two experiences. And said, the first time he got sick of his stomach, the second time, his hat blew off. <laughs> said he just uh, just had two experiences. He'd just been up the plane twice and said the first time he got sick his dog. Well, I've had more experiences than that, but it, it, it is bad. It has been in the past. Well, uh, you better hold on to your hat. Your hat's going to blow off when uh, you go to recommending what we do out there because we may have to have, we may have, to have 10 or 15. We may have to have 10 or 15 billion dollars. Well, we you may go spend thirty billion, Mr. President. We, we may have to we may have to have ten or fifteen billion more. We, may, we may have to have reserve to. legislation. We may have to have a big tax bill. I'm ready right now to bring in the appropriations for it, and I think it'd be better than using that damned old law that uh, Mac, Mr. McNamara's going to use. But I'm willing to go either way. We can get the appropriation. I can get it through, and I've talked to George May on. He says he can get it through the house. Don't you? Don't you think I'd be in a hell of a shape, though, if I called up the reserves between now and... I don't uh, need to call them up as organizations, Mr. President. I wouldn't do that at all. I wouldn't call up this division or that brigade. I would just mix up a lot of these people. I'd call them up as individuals under the MOS, just like you're calling up these draftees, because you've got a sanctuary there for all of these, uh, or there's 400,000 of them yet. Uh, that are in these reserve organizations. And they're the best brains and they're the best boys physically. They all came up when uh, we wasn't having to scrap and sc uh, scrape the bottom of the barrel. And we ought to mix them up and send some of these, uh, bring me some of these boys that have done that 12 months back uh, from uh, beating them and put them in these divisions where these divisions will be ready to fight. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make in these divisions that have ever fought in here, and, and it's just puppet cops said that they can get out here and hold their own with, every, with anybody because they haven't got any experienced people with them. Let me make a deal with you. I'll, I'll work on the reserve thing and, and uh, give, follow your suggestions on that. If you follow mine on let me call up uh, everybody. Let me draft all of them. Give me a little step program like you promised me one time. You made me a firm commitment and then ran out on me. Just 12, that's right. That's what you told me at the ranch. 12,500. But you just let me call up these damn folks and get them off the marijuana and out of the jungles and out of the rats eating on them and let me put them out in these damn camps you and work the hell out of them. Just work the hell out of them and feed them. I'm going to do it for the hundred so far. call them up today. And I but I, I don't want you fussing at me. I don't want to say a critical word. Not one. And uh, uh, I, I think you're going to waste a lot of money on them and all, but it's all right. I'm going to waste it. I'm gonna, I mean, it don't cost as much as a shriver. As a shriver. Oh, of course not. Well, well I was the most extravagant man ever ran the agency of the, uh, the, the National Government. He, 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 he has a, the most uh, visionary. Are you government. and Berkson going to uh, keep my budget uh, in terms this year? Keep what? Keep my budget within bounds this year? No. I don't think it's going to be possible to that, Mr. Buzz. Well, I think you could. You've got to, they've got about four billion. They've raised it now. Uh, what committee? And I know some of it you can't touch. One of it you can't. You can't touch this GI Bill because all of them run about it. And you you just got scared to oh, death. I was ready to vote against that. You just got scared to death. You just got scared to death. Somebody running against you down there. 
didn't they? You just adopted you, you are a state. You are a statesman, but by God, you're worse than Ralph Yard. We're on election year. <laughs> You like Maybe so, but I, I, I voted. I, 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 when I found out that old Eisenhower was going to be Joe's 